Miter joints can be one of the quickest and most beautiful ways to make a box because they hide the end grain, but they're really weak. So today I want to take you through four ways to make a mitered spline. I'm going to show you how to make the jig and then do four different types, uh, including this inlaid dovetail key, uh, these angled ones, regular dovetail keys, and then just straight miter splines. So let's head over to the table saw. Okay, so to do this, all you need is some scrap plywood. There's a couple different ways to make a spline jig. One is a separate box that you would then push against your fence and slide through your cutting apparatus, whether that's your router table or your table saw. What I'm going to do is encapsulate my fence. Uh, and what's great about that is you can later add different jigs to it. And I'll show you, we'll have a detachable face for the spline jig. So later on, you could add a tenoning jig or a whatever else kind of jig you want to screw that's going to slide on your fence. So uh, let's get to ripping this down. Okay, so now we're gonna build the part that encapsulates the fence, and this is very simple. I just put the side pieces up against the fence and slide like a business card or a piece of paper in there, and that'll kind of give it the necessary tolerances you need for it to slide nice and even. And then just uh, a little glue. I'm gonna do super glue, and then I'll come back and reinforce with screws. And the important part of this is you just want these guys to be square. So what I'll do is just take a clamp, and just loosely clamp them, making sure they're flat on my table. Just check that for square real quick. Yep. You wanna ensure that it's nice and flush with your side piece. And we'll just go ahead and reinforce that with some screws. Okay, so now this is our face piece, and this is what is going to screw to the side of our fence slider, I guess we'll call it. And I'm just gonna make a mark roughly in the middle, and this is how we're gonna place our guides for our spline jig. So I'm gonna make this line here, and again, this is kind of an arbitrary place, just kind of right in the middle somewhere is good, because now we're gonna make our 45s off of this exact spot. So we know that each of these need to go right at 45 degrees. So we're just gonna take our square here, line it right up with that line, and just draw a line both ways. And then we're gonna glue and screw our pieces on the same way we did before. So we're just gonna take some super glue, glue those on, and then come back and hit them with some screws. And then this will be a detachable face to our fence slider. So we're gonna put it on and make sure that it's flush and screw it on, but then we can also remove it so we can add different things to this. One of the most important thing about cutting splines is that you use a saw blade with a flat tooth grind. In fact, dado stacks have a flat tooth grind um, and this Freud is an ATB alternating tooth bevel with a flat bottom grind. So every third tooth has a straight across grind and that's important so you don't get a little hump in the middle of your, or at the furthest distance in of your spline, which will show a gap when you go to do a glue up. So make sure you have a blade that has flat teeth. Now I'm gonna show you three different types of splines that I like to use, but the most important thing to check when you're doing splines is that you're not cutting into your box. Although in the past I've used that as kind of like a shelf holder, kind of cool way to do a spline is you cut way into it and then slide a spine in there and use it for the shelf of your top tray. So what I do is I just line it up and just make sure that uh, I'm not going through and then I'll lock in that height. Next is you wanna lay out your splines. So what I'll do when I lay out my splines is I'll measure the distance and whether I wanna do two or three. The other thing you could do is do uh, deeper depths. The higher your saw blade goes, the more the spline is gonna stick out. So I'll give you an example of that. We'll do two here and one will be bigger than the other. What I'll do is I'll take this whole measurement, which is two and three eighths. I'll divide that by three, which will give me two splines. So that's gonna be just over three quarters in from each side. So I'll go. 
Now when you're lining up your box, what's great about doing two splines is once you've locked in your measurement, you are good to go. So all you have to do is lock your fence in, line it up with your saw blade. What's great about doing two of them is that when you cut one, you can just flip your box around and it's gonna be perfectly spaced from the edge again. Uh, so let's go ahead and cut these and then I'll show you some other types of splines as well. Okay, and then I've cut some spline material, which is just, you want it to be about the thickness of your kerf, and you just want to make sure that uh, it's not like so tight that once you put glue in it, it's going to get stuck. So we use our uh, Suisam Ryoba here and just basically cut ourselves some splines. You want to leave them proud so that you can then flush trim them later. We're going to go ahead and glue these in and get them flush trimmed. I'm going to show you a couple other types of splines as well. Another really cool type of spline I like to do is an angled spline. So I'll set my angle, something like that. I don't know, that's maybe like 15, 20 degrees or something like that. Um, we'll set that, we'll make sure that it's not gonna cut through our piece. And we're gonna go ahead and make those cuts without moving our thing. We're just gonna flip it around and then we're gonna put those splines in so that we get a cool decorative look. The next type of miter spline we're gonna do is a dovetail key, and we're gonna try something cool. We'll do one that's just regular dovetail, and then we're gonna try an inlaid one. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm using these really cool astro-coated dovetail bits from Bits Bits. There's a 15% off discount code down in the description in the pinned comments. Uh, but we're gonna basically do the same thing we did with the saw blade, but we're gonna cut this, and I'm gonna show you how to cut the key. Now these are really simple keys to cut. You basically, you do not want to change the height of your bit after you cut these. And you're just going to keep bumping your fence over until it fits in here. So we're going to do, we're just going to keep going. You flip your piece and keep bumping the fence over until it fits perfectly in here. Okay, now we're gonna try something I've never tried before, which is inlaid butterfly keys. And I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a try. Okay, so now I've put in the smaller 14 degree bit. So they both have the same angle, but you can see they're big time different sizes. And I've identified my center line. We're gonna line this up so that it goes through, and then we're gonna put in another dovetail key and it's gonna look like it's inlaid. Man, guys, that uh, inlaid dovetail key came out really, really good. I am i don't know that I've ever seen one of those before, so that's really cool. Uh, remember, miter splines don't have to be just boring, equal straight lines. There's lots of ways to dress them up. So, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up a dovetail jig, a stop blocker, a t-shirt. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day.